So, a year, a year has gone by since my last video and a lot of people have been wondering why that is. I will say it's been for a good reason and definitely something I've needed. I think it just, there came a point really where I felt like I was taking a circular brick and shoving it in a square hole and something just wasn't right for me. And I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot of why I have lived the life I've lived. I've learned a lot about why I struggle. I've learned a lot about why I suffer. I learn a lot about everything. And I feel like from the start of a stance where I am now that this is the most important video I'll ever put on this channel. You might want to get a little bit cosy because it might be a while, but it's very, very relevant, extremely relevant to anyone that's suffering with any anything really. So if I take you back to my original problem, before I started this channel, I was suffering a lot. I had very severe depression, very severe chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, pains every day, and I felt like I was in the pits of hell. I really did. It was it sends a shiver down my spine even thinking about being in that place right now. And I was suffering, and I really wanted to. <laughs> I was willing to do anything to get out of that. So, I was suffering, in hindsight now, for a number of reasons, but primarily, I was a victim of chronic, narcissistic, gaslighting, abuse. <laughs> that's, the, that's the bottom line of that. And you see, when we come to this planet, all we are is consciousness. And we enter a vessel, we enter this body, and our experiences shape us. Not really us, but they shape who we're being on this planet. And if we're not careful, we can assume that, you know, we are the way we are because that's who we are. And it's not, it's a, it's a development to withstand this life of whatever you've been born into, whether that's abuse or mental torture or what, whatever it is. And personality definitely comes into it as well, but my personality in the presence of chronic abuse um, was very submissive and very internalized. I internalized everything, I never expressed anything, and I was in this situation for such a long time that I actually numbed myself to all my feelings because they hurt, and I didn't want to feel hurt all the time because I didn't know when I was gonna get out of that situation. I didn't realize what the next day held. I didn't know, I didn't know anything, and I didn't know how to change it, I didn't know what I was gonna do, I had no job, I, had no social life, I, I, had no, I had literally was dependent on said person. And it was, it was, it was torture. And that's what it was, mental torture. And what happened was, is because I was in this fight or flight every day, day in, day out, is there's only so long that the body can cope with that. And I suffered and I continued to suffer and the symptoms got worse and worse and worse and it felt very frightening. And I prayed for anything. I prayed for just any kind of help to get me out of this situation, I prayed. And I was relieved very quickly of that situation and I had that year where I was not in the presence of chronic abuse. and. When I wasn't in the presence, I didn't know how long I was going to be free for, but when I wasn't in that situation, I was like, right, I'm going to eat well. 
I'm going to support myself, I'm going to go to bed early, I'm going to do all these things I know are good for me. And within that year, I was a different person. And I developed my self-confidence, started to rise, and I looked better, and I felt better, and I, you know, everything was going according to plan. So I started my YouTube channel. When I started my YouTube channel, I was like, you know, this has worked for me. <laughs> I, I've changed my diet, I've changed this, I've changed that, you know, and I go to bed early, I've reduced my simulation, look, da, 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 da. look at this blueprint, and this will help you recover. And I think I was a bit, uh, you know, I was, I was young, so I didn't really understand the gravity of what the abuse was having on me. <laughs> And I was out of the abuse and I did all these changes and obviously I made a massive recovery. So I put it down to these changes. That, you know, I ate clean, I ate this. I, you know, not a bad thing, I, they, they're very supportive. But I've done all these things, therefore I got well, look what I've done, you should do the same. So, The problem that I had there is I had an artificial bubble that caused my nervous system to calm down. I wasn't triggered by life because I didn't have any triggers in my area. And I artificially created a healing environment. And what ended up happening was, is a said person came back into my life. I went out into the world. I met a partner. I did this and that. And all of a sudden, things started creeping back. Not as bad as they were, but they started creeping back. As you know from my channel, I've had episodes of IJ nephropathy, I've pissed blood, I've had gout attacks, I've had all these different things. And I would always go, right, I need to go back to what worked. I need to have a healing diet, healing this. I need to go bed on time. I need to do, I need to do this, I need to do that. Da -da 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 -da. And I caused a lot of stress for myself. And it's like I had blinkers on. I was like, right, this is what worked for me. I need to keep this up, otherwise I'm not gonna get blah, 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 blah. And I was just so, so fixated on this healing protocol that I'd done. And in itself caused me great amounts of stress because with the arrival of having a baby and wanting to be a good dad and having a partner and wanting to be a good partner and having said person in my life and all these different things, it makes it very hard to be very rigid in how you live your life. So I, if I'm very honest with myself, I've lived in stress for a long time. I've not been that aware of it because of where I've come from, but I have been living in stress. And if there's anything I've learned from the last 15, 20 years, is that the most toxic, poison for yourself is stress. You know, whether you're religious or whether you're uh, believe in evolution, you are occupying a body of an intelligence that far exceeds anything we know. We have no idea how this machine works. It's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating that we're even here occupying one of these bodies that's able to <laughs> do everything it does. It's fascinating. And it has roles it plays inside the body, all these functions, all these different things that it does day to day. And although the diet is poisonous and the sleep, the technology, all these different things affect the body and how it functions, if you're chronically stressed, there's only a matter of time until this body degrades. It cannot continue under those circumstances. So if you live in constant anxiety, constant stress, whether that's caused by the outside or inside yourself of how you perceive the world and what, you know, for example, I was like, oh my God, I've never had a girlfriend. I've never had a job. How am I going to do this? And I'd just get so focused in the future. I was living in stress. Even if this, even on the outside, if it was okay, I would have stress going on inside. So the body degrades under these conditions. And I've lived under those conditions for considerable amounts of time. And that was the problem. That is the root cause of disease. 
dis-ease. You are uncomfortable in life, whether that's how you feel about yourself, your living situations, the people you surround yourself, whatever it is, you have uneasiness going on you chronically that the body can't cope. And that, that was the issue. I remember a year ago, I was like, this can't be right, the way I'm living, it just can't be right. And it wasn't. So, you know, a year ago I was following an AIP protocol diet and I just got so fixated on food. It was actually very stressful. And I just thought this, this can't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So I slowly have been retraining my brain, my nervous system. I've been healing myself and seeing things logically about why I react to life the way I do and slowly unwinding it all and being relaxed about life. Not trying to control life. And what ended up happening was I wasn't having reactions to foods. Like if I went out, I'd just order a dish, enjoy the company, enjoy the conversation. And the reactions weren't there after <laughs> after a few weeks because I realized I've been a very sad person. I've been a very stressed person. And it's by no fault of my own. You know, you come, as, come to this planet, your consciousness, you come as a child and all you have are the influences around you. And my influence was very domineering and made me think that that was a white wall and that was a red wall. And I had no certainty or safety within myself and my own expression and my own emotions. I, I literally had blanked them out to the point where I didn't even know how I felt anymore. You know, my say my partner, but like, over a situation, it's like, how are you feeling? I'm like, I haven't got a clue. And it's because I had to learn to block out all my emotions and that all, that energy doesn't just dissipate and leave, it resides in myself. So my healing journey is about myself, learning my boundaries, saying what's good for me, not just appeasing other people. I think that's a core thing as well, is I was a people pleaser. A person, especially people that I cared for, to the point where I sacrificed myself. And these lessons are so core to me living a healthy, prosperous, happy life that I can't not do it. So that's where I've been for the last year. I, I'm hoping this is making sense. But that's where I've been for the last year, is learning me. How does James feel right now? How do I feel about this situation that I'm in? How do I feel about this? You know, I'm upset, or I'm sad, or I'm angry. And it's okay to have those emotions. You know, a lot of emotions I had in said company was not okay, and I suppressed it, or I, supp I suppressed everything. And I suppressed everything to such a point that I felt really nothing. I was numb, I had anhedonia, I had depersonalization. I had all these things going on that obviously the addictions crept in because I wanted to feel something. My life was a mess. I didn't feel anything. And when I had addictions to pornography and video games, I felt something. <laughs> and, you know, when I started addressing why I went for the addictions, you know, whether it's food or anything, it's because I wanted to feel okay. So, my whole approach to when I meet someone with a chronic illness now is very different. You know, uh, in the past I would focus on the diet and stuff, which are not bad things to do, by any means. But if the chronic stress is still in place, whether it's from yourself, your own, your own perception of life, or the people you live with, or, or all these different things, those things will not do what you're hoping them to do. If you're somebody that checks the news every day and you look at what's happening in the world, 
and you perceive of all the things you should be doing, whether that be, I should be learning a new skill, I should be doing this, I should be doing that, oh my God, I had this, why didn't I just do this? Da, da, da. If you're putting that amount of pressure on yourself, you're literally burning the candle from both ends. So, this has really been, this year has been the most progressive in terms of my healing journey for being a happy, functional person. And it hasn't been down to getting perfect sleep, you know. As important as sleep is, I have not had perfect sleep, but I have had happier times this year with sleeping next to a toddler, toddler kicking me in the head than times where I've had a perfect night's sleep but woken up in stress. It's, my perspective has changed massively. Now, I changed my perspective on things. You know, it was work, but slowly but surely my internal environment was much more content and happy and all of a sudden work said, you know what, we're gonna pay you to leave. We're gonna give you X amount of money, right, to leave your job. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant, right? You know, I can go on to either do this full time or I'm not even sure yet. But I was like, wow, okay, that's coincidence maybe, but okay, brilliant. So I've left my job. I'm no longer employed as of this month. And I'm just, just content. And that contentness and that peace and that relaxed, parasympathetic state is the most healing thing that you can do. You know, sleep is the most powerful thing you can do in terms of your recovery, but the relaxed, happy state is the most healing state you can be in. And that should be your priority. Whether that's taking the shoulds out of your life, I should do this course, I should do this, I should be doing this, da 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 da. Having a bit of compassion for yourself and just understanding yourself, trying to unravel what this mess is that goes on inside us and aim for relaxation and peace as much as you can. It's the most healing thing you can do. Michael Singer, The Surrender Experiment, audiobook. I'd recommend that to everyone watching this video. And he talks about how, you know, we come to this planet with our consciousness, you know, our perception, we perceive what's going on around us. And because of the pain, the traumas and things we go through, we get all these scars and grooves and everything that stops us living a happy life. It's a really good audio book, I really recommend it. But I feel in a much better position now to actually come on a video and actually give something worthwhile. Something that's gonna help people. <laughs> I think a year ago, I broke my ankle in October last year. And in that time, I put so much pressure on myself. I sat on the couch and I was sat with myself and I couldn't be productive and I was out of job. I was out of my work at the time and I was getting a bit of pressure for that and then I got a written warning and I was sat immobilised with myself and my feelings and my emotions and I was panicking, <laughs> I was really panicking and I thought, right, what can I do? I can make videos again, I can be valuable, I can have some self-worth because I'm doing this video, hi I'm James, I have this YouTube channel, I do this and that, yes that's value for myself. I placed so much emphasis on outside things to feel value inside and it was a very dangerous thing because I would live by this discipline rule where I'd go, right, I go to bed at this time, I'm going to wake up this time, I'll wake up and I'll go on my rowing machine and after my rowing machine I'll do some calisthenics with pull-ups and I'll mark my progression 
And if I've got good progression, that means I'm doing well. And then I'm going to work towards building my business. And, da, 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 da. and then if I ticked all these boxes, it was like, right, I'm, value, I, I'm valuable now. I, I re, I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of this. I'm worthy of that. Yes, okay. Right, I can relax now. But if the routine was thrown off, this niggle would build up inside me and I'd get in a mood and my girlfriend would be like, why are you in a mood? And I'm like, I don't even know, but something's niggling me. <laughs> and it would build up. And the least productive I felt in the day, by the end of the day, I was frustrated, I was sad, I was everything all in one. And I'm like, what is going on here? You know, what is going on? I put so much emphasis on being a productive person, being a healthy person, all these, all these things I put on myself, it, it exhausts me just thinking about it. I can't remember where I was going with that. But what I'm saying is, is I don't know what I was going to say. Just say it, the way I've been living since 2014, when I recovered, I think because I was so disciplined and so disciplined about diet and so disciplined about exercise and so disciplined about sleep and da, 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 and I felt so bloody good, I thought, well, I've got to maintain this for the rest of my life. But the reality is when you work, when you have a partner, when you have a child, when you have all these real life things, those things aren't always gonna be how you want them to be. And that's okay. That's okay, you know. If I do the rowing machine once in a week, it's not the end of the world, James. It doesn't mean you don't val you, you're not valuable or you don't deserve love or all these different things. And everything I've learned in the past year, I am just so fascinated by human beings now and how we why we do the things we do and why we think the things we do and all these different things. And how we attach to our mind, you know, thoughts come into our head and we kind of almost associate that because it's a voice in my head, that's me, but it's, it's not. The brain, a lot of the times, the brain is so active because you're so unhappy, you're so distressed that it's just trying to solve things for you. It's trying to, because you know, the brain is magnificent. It made this computer, it made the, this phone that I'm recording this on, you know, it's a magnificent machine. But, you know, if you're stagnant and anxious and depressed and sad, it's just thinking of solutions or it's trying to think of the ways it can help you. And if it really is struggling, it's like, well, maybe you're just gonna kill yourself, you know, and you can get into these suicidal mindsets because you're so unhappy, you're so distressed, and there's no, there seems like there's no answer. It's, it, it's fascinating. If I look back now, it's absolutely fascinating. I think the key point I want you to take away from this video is that to take the pressure off yourself to do all these things, you know, have perfect sleep, the perfect diet, perfect this, perfect that, perfect that, and actually just go within and try and find peace, whatever that may be. You know, you may have to journal to understand truly what's going on because sometimes we're so desensitized to the way we've been living our life, it's we're not even conscious of what's going on or why we do the processes that we do. You know, you may feel the need to be productive like me. You may feel like, I need to be progressing a job. I need to be progressing this. I need to be progressing that. And if I'm not doing those things, it goes back to self-worth and all these different things that can affect our well-being. And really just rein it in, rein it back and just lose that control that you need for the outside. What I will say will say this is if you think about all the distressing thoughts you've had in the past year and all the everything that goes on in your mind did any of it work out to providing you a better living experience I can say for myself that a lot of the garbage that goes on in my head 
is just that, it's literal garbage. And all it does is create a nervous system response inside me that actually just makes me feel like garbage. So just, just be aware of what's going on inside, really sit with yourself. I think that's why meditation can be so powerful is because we sit with ourselves and actually examine what the hell is going on in there. Because we need to get that garbage out. And that will heal you more than anything. That will heal you more than an organic diet, although it's beneficial. It will heal you more than a great night's sleep, which also is beneficial. It will heal you more than anything, you know. It's to be at peace and to be happy is the, the most healthy place you can be. And it always brings me back to, you know, people say, well, you know, this guy, he's 98, he smokes and he, he eats a McDonald's and he has a Coca-Cola every day and it's like, how's he 98? He might be happy. <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, you can have, I've, I have personally, when I was going on my healing journey, in the beginning, I would find people and they were doing the right things. You know, you see, oh, they're doing these smoothies, they're doing this and that, and I'm looking at them and going, they, they look awful, they look, they look awful. And it's because their internal environment, you can't conquer that with food. You can't just shove loads of organic food down your gullet and it solve your internal problems. If you have someone that's at peace and happy eating a McDonald's or you have someone eating, you know, loads of healthy, organic foods, but they are suffering and they're in chronic abuse and the nervous system is on edge and, you know, who's going to be healthy? It's the guy eating McDonald's because he's actually quite happy and content. It's, that is the biggest lesson I've learned in this last year. And it's, I feel like it's something very valuable to share. And you know what, I'm, 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 it's nearly half an hour. I'm gonna leave, put this video up now. If you have any questions, if you have anything you want me to cover about this, this year that I've been on, which has been very tough, but equally rewarding, let me know and I'll make videos. And you know what, I'm really, I am pondering what to do with my life now, you know, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself, I'm letting life unfold and not trying to control it, I'm not trying to put pressure on myself to make the outside okay, because if I look back now, as dire as my situations look, it actually turned out okay, you know? I was at one point, I was 16, like 16 stone and in pain. And then a few years later, I had lost all the weight and felt good. And the next a few years after that, I was working for BT in a job that I enjoyed to begin with. I really enjoyed it. And I had no qualifications, I had nothing to show him. I was a 29 year old man and my CV was empty. Other than this YouTube channel, it was empty. And I was like, how am I ever gonna get a job? How am I ever gonna get a job with a CV like that? And then I got a job with a really good company and a really good job. Like I can't think of a better first job. Well, you know, it just happened. And then to this year where it's like they've paid me to leave so I can go on to my next journey, you know. And all the times I spent in dread, anxiety, stress. And life just unfolded anyway and it was okay, you know, it was okay. I didn't, all that time I spent, you know, you just got to bring it to the moment and be the best you can be in this moment. Be the most relaxed you can be in this moment. Don't put the pressure on yourself for the same. And just realise that if you get yourself into a healing mindset, a relaxed mindset and at peace, 
and let life almost take control, you know, just stop trying to control life, you may start to attract things that actually improve your life. And that's kind of that's kind of what I've been working on, guys. And I know this is a long video, but I, you know, I can imagine that if I was in that place I was in 2012, if I had a video like this, it would have calmed me down. And I would have liked the fact it was a long duration video. I actually feel good. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and I just hope, you know, you get into that happy place because, you know, everyone deserves that. You, you, you were born here and you were just a ball of energy and it's the things that have happened to you and the people in your life and how you've reacted to all this outside influences that have caused you to be where you are right now and it's no fault of your own. But let's get rid of all that garbage and just try and get back to what you came here as, which was literally just consciousness, just energy. You know, I'll look, I'll look at my little boy and he will get up at, oh God, sometimes I'm a bit angry about it, but he'll get up at like bloody half six, seven o'clock and he's like, let's play. <laughs> and he'll play all day. And it'll be 10 at night and he'll still be like, let's play, it's so, it's just happy to be alive. And I was looking at, you know, that's one thing I've learned. The biggest teachers in my life have actually been animals and children. You know, I, I, you know, right at the beginning, I'd look at my dog and I'd be like, he's being bit by ticks, you know, what, what they, you know, don't need the best diet. But why does he have boundless energy? He rests properly and he's probably not got all this garbage in his head. And with my kid, he's not got any of that garbage yet. He's just a big ball of energy and he's, he's happy to just be expressing himself. And I'm not suppressing him. That's a, another important thing that I'll maybe talk about another time. But I am not trying to make him regulate me. I'm not trying to go, this is how you're supposed to be. I'm literally just going, just be whatever you're going to be. You're a kid. Be whatever you're going to be. And sometimes, unfortunately, some of us don't get that opportunity. We get pushed down. Thanks for watching, guys.